Hello everybody, this is Jermaine Cheong from The Peak. Today we have a very special guest with us today. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Oak. I was a news anchor at CNBC for 16 years and I've just recently set up my own media training company called Oak Media and I'm very excited to be here with The Peak today. We, uh, um, Lisa is going to show us some tips on how to present ourselves on interview when we are on the TV. Lisa, um, a lot of people go on TV and they get so intimidated by this platform. So how do you keep your nerves under control? It is a very frightening thing when you do a television interview. And the reason for that is because you feel vulnerable. You're afraid of getting up there and making a mistake. So I teach my clients a couple of techniques for getting past that. The first one is you have to change your inner dialogue, what's happening mm. in your head. And you have to move from that negative voice that's saying, oh no, they're going to ask me a hard question and I'm going to stuff it up. You've got to change that and switch it to, hey, look at me. I get to be on TV. This is an opportunity for me to deliver a strong message about my brand and to really cultivate my credibility because I know this stuff. So the first thing is to change that inner dialogue. My second little tip for dealing with nervousness is, is something every news anchor and reporter and producer learns in journalism school, and that's to pretend you're talking to only one person. Because if you sit down and you start envisioning every person you've ever known in your whole life watching you, your kindergarten teacher, your grandmother, all of your friends on Facebook, you're going to shut down and you're going to be incredibly nervous. Pretend you're having a cup of coffee with one person, little chit chat, keeps it nice and flowing and conversational, and that's the secret to coming across as being more relaxed on TV. So it pays to have a partner to practice this with before the actual interview takes Absolutely. place? Absolutely, that is such a good call because the more practice you get, the more at ease you become when dealing with off-the-cuff questions. Mm. What happens if I do not know the answer to a question or the interviewer turns a bit hostile and I'm getting uncomfortable? That is such a great question, Jermaine, because that's the biggest fear of everyone who does an interview at any time. You're afraid that they're going to ask you a question and you're not going to know the answer, but there's a very simple way of dealing with this. And media trainers around the world use the exact same technique. One of the techniques is called bridging or transitioning. And what you want to do is move the discussion from a place where you're not sure or it's not your area of expertise. You want to do a little transition and move it to a place where you're very competent Hmm. and comfortable. So the way to do this, there are three steps. Step number one, provide a very short answer to the question that hmm. you don't know the answer to. Hmm. So yes, no, or maybe. Hmm. Then you'd use the transition phrase like, you know, I think what we really need to be focusing on. That's an example hmm. of a transition mm -hmm. phrase. And you move the discussion and then you bring it back to your message, which is where you're comfortable, where you have authority, and you deliver a really strong answer in hmm. that area. Hmm. So do I um, look into the camera when I talk during the interview or do I look elsewhere, look at the interviewer? This is something that people really need to know before they go into a, a TV interview situation because if your eyes are looking everywhere, you're, you're not going to come across as credible and in control yeah. and authoritative. So if the rule of thumb is if the interviewer is there, if it's a reporter with a cameraman or you're in a studio, just look at the journalist. Mm. and have a discussion and mm -hmm. direct your questions to that person. If there are two people interviewing you on the desk, co-anchors for example, or a guest host, direct your eyes and your answer to the person who asks you the question. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to be in a remote interview situation, is the term that we, we use in television, that means you're probably sitting in a little room all by yourself with a camera and the interviewer is somewhere else in another studio, yeah. in another country, keep your eyes focused on the camera 100% hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. How do I exercise control over body language? Can I um, do gestures, which I do every day in my conversations, or do I have to tone it down a lot? You don't have to control it. Mm. I always tell my clients that gesturing is a good thing because mm. you want to appear as animated as possible in, in your answers during mm. a television interview. So by using your hands, even if the shot is only from here up, that carries up to your face mm. and it makes you seem more enthusiastic and more genuine in your responses. So I always encourage it. You don't have to control it at all. How loud and at what speed should I be talking and answering my interviewer? Should I go extra loud? Um, should I slow down my, my, the way I talk? 
I always advise people to speak as if you're having a normal conversation because that's how it's going to come across with the exception of boosting it a little because mm. television has a tendency, I don't know if you've ever watched yourself back on a tape and thought, hey, I don't sound like that or I, I'm much more energetic than that. Mm. Television has a tendency to flatten things out and make mm. them seem a bit more dull than they are. So what you have to do is ramp it up 25% your volume and your enthusiasm mm. and speak at a normal pace as if you were speaking with a friend. So then it goes back to our very first question, how practice makes everything perfect. So just keep practicing and practicing before the interview. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and you should have someone recording this mm. at home as well. Okay. If you have someone at home that you can practice with, and get them to ask you tough questions mm. on camera because it's amazing how when you start to use that technique I was telling you about, about answering, transitioning, and then getting back to your message, if you practice that a few times, you all of a sudden get very good at it and you mm. don't get that frightened look mm. on your face when an interviewer throws it at you. So yes, practice at home and play it back and watch it, even though it's so hard, yeah. isn't it, to watch yourself on videotape. Everyone finds it tough. So what is the most um, important thing you've learned in the last 16 years on, on broadcast TV? What is the one thing that you still remind yourself repeatedly before you go on TV? I think it's to be authentic. Mm. If, if you go on and you, th you think, hey, that person's great on TV, I'm gonna try to be like that. It never works. It's important just to be yourself. And the other important thing I've learned is that it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert, you can still deliver a really great TV interview. There are tips and tricks that can get you to that point where, where you're gonna really hit a home run with it. Mm. Thanks for joining us, Lisa. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been fun. We have with us Lisa Oak, CEO of Oak Media today. This is Jermaine from The Peak.